I apologize for the low audio in those last two videos. Hopefully it's fixed now. This is chapter three, the final chapter in part one. Optical fiber fundamentals. In this chapter, we will discuss light propagation in optical fibers and describe the characteristics of single mode and multimode fibers, including attenuation and dispersion factors affecting the propagation of light in glass fibers. Our chapter objectives will list the characteristics of fiber optic transmission, explain the concepts of light refraction and reflection, and define the refractive index, discuss light propagation in an optical fiber and total internal reflection, compare and contrast single mode and multimode optical fibers, discuss the characteristics of step index, graded index, and dispersion shifted fibers, explain the factors affecting the quality of light transmission such as attenuation, modal dispersion, and chromatic dispersion, as well as explain the use of mode conditioners. Fiber optic systems have a lot of advantages. Some of those advantages are listed here. There's extremely low attenuation. Uh, transmission over large distances can be achieved, or over longer distances can be achieved. Attenuation as low as 0.2 dB per, per kilometer allows a distance between amplifiers up to 100 kilometers or 62.5 miles. There's an amenity to electromagnetic interference. Glass is an insulator, so it doesn't conduct or, or doesn't, uh, isn't affected by electromagnetic interference. And fibers can be bundled tightly together without causing interference to each other. There's an immunity to external electromagnetic radiation. Glass is not affected by the radiation from external sources. Uh, lightning doesn't affect it. <clears throat> it's got a very high data rate, uh, data, data transmission capacity. Optical fibers can carry an incredible amount of voice, video, and data services simultaneously over single fiber. It's lower cost. Uh, gas is less expensive than glass is less expensive than copper and we have wavelength division multiplexing as we discussed in chapter two more signals can be transmitted at the same time to increase the capacity of an optical fiber this is the basic construction of an optical fiber we have a glass inner core a glass inner core We have glass cladding going around that. The cladding helps to keep the, the uh, light confined to the core. And then surrounding that, we have our primary buffer and our jacket. And these help to protect the, uh, the glass. The primary buffer uh, usually being an acrylate and the jacket being PVC or, or uh, polyethylene. Refraction and refractive index. The bending of light rays as they move through the intersection of two mediums, such as air to water, is refraction. This is measured by the index of refraction or refractive index. To determine your refractive index, you take the speed of light in a vacuum and you divide it by the speed of light in that medium. Uh, the speed of light in a vacuum is 300 kilometers per 300,000 kilometers per second, or 300 million meters per second, uh, where the speed of light in air is about. It's essentially the same, 298. Uh, 1,000 kilometers per second or 298 million meters per second. And then going on to water, uh, water is about 225 million meters per second or 225,000 kilometers per second. And then glass uh, is about 200 million meters per second or 200,000 kilometers per second. The greater the refractive index of the material, the optically denser, the slower the speed of light traveling through it. So if you have a high refractive index, that means that, that light is traveling slowly through it. Since light travels at different speeds through different materials, the light rays bend as they move from one material to another. We see this a lot, or, or you should have seen this uh, if you've been around clear water before and put a stick or your arm into clear water. Uh, you can see that going from the lower ref refractive index of air into the higher refractive index of water, uh, you'll see the second effect here where it looks like or it appears that your arm is bending or the stick is bending uh, downward. And this is because the light is speeding up or slowing down going from one material to another. 
Light speeds up as it moves from denser to less dense and slows down when it moves from less dense to a dense material. And it appears to move toward the perpendicular. That's this line right here. It appears to move toward that perpendicular. Corrective index of common materials. This is a table that shows these common materials. Uh, we have in a vacuum, it's a one. Uh, because we're dividing again the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in a vacuum uh, is one where air is the speed of light through air is so close to the speed of light uh, in a vacuum we we can call it essentially the same then the speed of light through water uh, is about 75 million meters per second yeah, 75 million meters per second slower so it's not quite the same. Uh, this is our 1.33 uh, refractive index. And then for glass, it varies through glass depending on what that glass is doped with uh, or what's been added to that glass. Refractive index is a dimensionless number, meaning it's just 1 or 1.33. You don't need to put a, a quantifier on there. For reflection, this is not refraction, this is reflection. Reflection occurs when the incident light beam bounces off the surface of a mirror-like material. You can see here where the incident beam is bouncing off in a reflected beam at an equal angle to the incident angle, or equal and opposite angle to the incident angle. Frenal reflection uh, occurs when a transparent object both reflects and refracts light at the same time. So when you put light or you, you shine a laser at a, a, a glass window, you can see that that laser light is traveling through the glass in this refracted light, but it's also being reflected off of that glass. The ratio of refracted, reflected light Refracted light depends on the refractive index of each medium and the incident angle of the light beam. The incident, if the incident angle is less than the critical angle, light is refracted. Here's our critical angle here. If, if we shine a light less than this angle, our light is going to go into the other material and become refracted. If our incident angle is equal to the critical angle, the refracted light travels parallel to the surface. So there's still no reflection, and we just have this refraction that travels parallel to the surface of the two. If our incident angle is greater than the critical angle, so here's our, our uh, critical angle here, and here's our incident angle here. If our incident angle is greater than that angle, we get reflection. This light is going to bounce off. Think of it like skipping a stone across water. If you get the angle right, you're going to get that light to bounce off. Um, and then we have 100% of the light reflected off the boundary surface rather than going into it as we see with refraction. Total internal reflection only occurs when a light beam goes from a material with a higher refractive index to a material with a lower refractive index. This is why the core of our glass is always going to have a higher refractive index than the cladding. <clears throat> in optical fibers, total internal reflection occurs because the refractive index of the core is slightly greater than the refractive index of the cladding. Doesn't need to be a whole lot more, just a little bit more. So we have this mirrored effect on the inside of our core here. And try to think of this in 3D. Um, so these light, this light is bouncing around off of every surface inside that core down the length of the fiber. The light beam with an incident angle less than the critical angle is refracted and lost. That's this one right here, becomes refracted and lost. Due to total internal reflection, the light bounces back and forth at the core cladding boundary. This is how we get light to travel such a long distance. It's basically traveling inside of a mirror. We have an acceptance angle or an acceptance cone. Uh, the acceptance angle is for for thinking of this in a, in a 2D or a two-dimensional uh, in a two-dimensional way, where the acceptance cone is just translating that to a three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional image. 
They define whether a light beam striking the end of the fiber will propagate down the fiber or whether it will travel down the fiber. Light beams entering the fiber angle with incident angles less than the acceptance angle are going to be guided. So if they're inside of this acceptance angle, they're going to be guided down the core. Light beams entering with incidence angles greater than the acceptance angle are refracted and lost. And that's this one right here. It's not going to be uh, not going to be propagated, propagated down the core, not going to travel down the core. It's just going to be lost. And then if we hit at the incidence angle, um, it's going to travel down, or at the critical angle here, it's going to travel down the uh, core cladding boundary. A numerical aperture. The numerical aperture relates to the acceptance angle to the difference in refractive indices between the core and the cladding of the fiber. The greater the numerical aperture, the greater the acceptance angle and the ability for fiber to collect light from its end. This is our acceptance angle. This is everything inside of here can be collected and traveled down. The greater the difference between the refractive index and the of the core and cladding, the larger the angle of acceptance. Light of different wavelengths travels different speeds in the same material, such as glass, or uh, if you've seen a rainbow traveling through that, light's going to travel at different speeds based on the wavelength that it is. White light is composed of all the colors in the visible spectrum, each, uh, each color in the visible spectrum having a different wavelength within 455 nanometers and 750 nanometers. White light will spread in a rainbow at the prism output. If you've ever seen a rainbow, uh, you will always see it in the same order. It's Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Uh, rainbows don't appear in the other direction because of the way that, or the speeds that these wavelengths are traveling. This phenomenon is called dispersion. And it's one of the issues affecting light propagation in a fiber. Multimode fibers. In a multimode fiber, the core is large enough for multiple rays of light to propagate at the same time. These rays are called modes. Here we see a lot of different modes of light hitting our cone of acceptance and being guided through the core here. With a single light source, each mode has the same wavelength and carries the same information from the transmitter to the receiver. It enters the fiber at different angles and therefore travels a different path. You can see here that these light rays or these modes are traveling at different, in different paths. What, what happens when they're traveling in different paths is they end up traveling different distances. And so we end up with modal dispersion. In multimode step index fiber, we have two different refractive ind indices here. The refractive index of the core is the same all the way through the core, all the way through the length of the fiber. And then the refractive index of the cladding is the same all the way through the cladding down the length of the fiber. Modal dispersion is what we get when light is traveling a different path, so it's traveling a different distance. You see these higher order modes here are traveling longer distances than our fundamental mode traveling down the center. So we have multimode graded index fiber. And in this fiber, the refractive index of the core in the center is, is higher than it is of the, at the core on the outside of the core here. That means that our fundamental modes are traveling slower and these higher order modes travel slower as they're going through the middle, but they travel much faster as they're going around the outsides of the uh, of the core there. So that helps to reduce modal dispersion so that all the light ends up at the end of the fiber at the same time. Uh, peripheral modes traveling longer distance are faster than the radial modes that have shorter distance, therefore they arrive at around the same time. For a single mode fiber, single mode fibers have a smaller core and this allows transmission of only one mode. Uh, we have a cutoff wavelength based on the diameter of the, of the core. In this 8.3 millimeter or 8.3 uh, micrometer core, uh, our cutoff wavelength is 1200 or about 1200 nanometers. Uh, if we were to put a 850 nanometer wavelength down this 
down this 8.3 micron core fiber, we could have two modes, and at 750, you could have three modes. But at about 1200 nanometers, the wavelength only allows one mode to tra travel down that line. So we use 1310 nanometer sources uh, for these fibers. Cutoff wavelength for an optical fiber with a given core diameter is a wavelength above which only one mode or only one wavelength of light can propagate. These are uh, single mode fibers are used for long distance transmission since they're not affected by modal dispersion. Multimode fibers. Multimode fibers use 850 and 1300 nanometer uh, light sources. These fibers propagate more than one mode. That's why they're called multimode. Note though that they all still have the same 125 micron exterior, exterior diameter uh, regardless of what their core is. Core and cladding is 125 micron or the, the uh, cladding is 125 micron, but the cores are 62.5 or 50. For single mode fibers at 1310 uh, 10 nanometers and 1550 nanometers, these are the wavelengths that we use for single mode fibers. Uh, these fibers only propagate one single mode, but the cores are 8.3 and 9 nanometers, or I'm sorry, mic microns, micrometers. Uh, the core and cladding, typical sizes that you're going to see for telecom or cable TV are 8.3 and 9 microns for the core and 125 microns for the cladding diameter. We do have another type of fiber, two other types of fiber. One of them is DSF or dispersion shifted fibers. <clears throat> In these fibers, we have the lowest chromatic dispersion wavelength moved from 1310 to 1550 nanometers. Uh, both the lowest attenuation and the lowest dispersion occur at the same wavelength, so we get a higher bandwidth uh, or a higher bit rate achieved. They do have reduced performance when they use multi, uh, multiplex signals, so we use non-zero sh uh, non dispersion shifted fibers um, for dense wavelength division multiplexing. In these fibers, we shift our zero dispersion slightly to the left or slightly to a lower wavelength, or shorter wavelength. We also have intrinsic and extrinsic attenuation factors. An intrinsic attenuation factor is dependent on the manufacturer or, or the, the way that the fiber was constructed. Uh, these are scattering and absorption. Extrinsic attenuation, think of it as something that you have done to this fiber, something that the installer or the customer has done to the fiber. Uh, for in intrinsic factors, those are scattering and absorption. Uh, extrinsic factors are mi micro bends and macro bends. We also have dispersion, modal and chromatic dispersion that we'll talk about here. These are all attenuation factors. For our intrinsic attenuation, uh, the light intensity decreases as it travels down the fiber, so we end up with a uh, power loss measured in uh, dB per km. This is also called a attenuation coefficient. Light signal must be regenerated after certain distances. Even though it's inside of a mirror and we call it total internal reflection, not everything is being reflected and a lot of this is based on the quality of glass uh, that we're using for trans uh, transportation or communication medium. Attenuation in fiber is mainly due to scattering. This is where light is scattered or spread away from the glass uh, or spread away from the core by glass non-uniformities. Stronger at smaller wavelengths and decreases at higher wavelengths. And we also have absorption. Impurities in the glass absorb light uh, and dissipate it in the form of heat. This would be if a piece of dust got melted into the glass. These are our attenuation windows for silica glass or optical fiber. We have three low loss windows. One is at 850, one is at 1300, and one is at 1500. This is why we use these. This is specific to silica based glass. Um, these windows are specific to silica based glass. Our attenuation coefficient, these are ballpark figures here for 850 nanometers it could be uh, you might see a 1.5 db per kilometer um, loss 
1310, it could be as low as 1 dB per kilometer. And at 1550, it could be as low as 0.2. We also have the, our lowest loss is at 1550 nanometers. Uh, this is where light's traveling that, those long distances or those longer distances up to 100 kilometers or 62 miles, 62, 62 and a half miles without a repeater. Beyond about 1550 nanometers, uh, light becomes absorbed or, or infrared light anyway starts to become absorbed by uh, silica-based glass. Uh, beyond about 1625 nanometers is where that window ends at. Glass is most transparent to light in, uh, at wavelengths in the near infrared area or near infrared group of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Fiber bending would be considered an extrinsic factor or extrinsic attenuation factor. Excessive fiber bending causes significant light energy to escape outside the core since the condition of total internal reflection is lost. Due to microscopic imperfections in the core or cladding boundary, we have uh, micro bending. And this is something that you may not be able to see with your bare eye. Uh, this is something someone could have stepped on it and there was a grain of sand underneath that fiber and that could cause a micro bend. Um, or if it was spooled improperly, if it was spooled on top of itself uh, and then continue to be spooled on top of itself, that could cause micro bending. A macro bend is going to be a visible sharp bend when the fiber is bent around a mandrel or when it's squeezed into a patch panel. A lot of slack fiber will be coiled up and just kind of shoved into a patch panel. This introduces macro bends. Um, or if you're going too sharp around a corner, that could also introduce a macro bend. And you see here how our ref reflected angle gets changed as it's going through these macro and micro bends and then we lose that light uh, out into the cladding. When the bend radius of a fiber optic cable is not specified, the recommended minimum bend radius is 20 times the, the diameter of the cable. So if we have a one inch diameter cable then our, and we don't have a specified uh, bend radius, then the minimum bend radius is 20 inches. And what that means is that you've got 20 inches where you have to take 20 inches around a corner. Uh, this is during, uh, this is the, the dynamic bend radius, meaning that when you're pulling the fiber, you can go no more than 20 times. For a static bend radius, if it's not otherwise listed, that static bend radius is 10 times the diameter of the fiber. Modal dispersion. The spread of light pulses and multimode fibers where the same light pulse is carried down the fiber by several modes, each one arriving at slightly different times is modal or pulse dispersion. And how it happens is if we have a slower bit rate here, we'll see that some of these modes are still traveling a longer distance. And so with this as an input, our pulses are not as separated. If we have a faster bit rate and we go through the same modal dispersion, you end up with overlapping pulses on the end, uh, on the uh, receive side. And in some cases, you can't tell that these are separate pulses. Modal dispersion increases with the distance. Uh, with, with distance. That's why we're only using multimode fibers for short distance communications. We also have chromatic dispersion. Light source emits a range of wavelengths. Each wavelength travels at a different speed in a material. As a result, the transmitted light pulse is spread at the output. So because these light pulses are traveling different speeds through the glass, we're losing our defined separation between these pulses. Single mode fibers are only affected by chromatic dispersion, which is much smaller compared to modal dispersion. That's why single mode fibers are used for long distance transmissions. So for multimode fibers, we have chromatic and, mod and modal dispersion. But for single mode fibers, we only see chromatic dispersion. This is a comparison of the spread of light pulses due to modal and chromatic dispersion for different types of fibers. We have POF, much less expensive than glass. 
but they have a much lower performance. They're used in illumination, medical applications, and short distance static transmissions. Core diameter is about one millimeter. The pros on these are low cost, it's plastic, they're flexible, and they're easy to handle. The cons on these, they have high attenuation, where some multi-mode fibers, you might lose half of your light or 3 dB in a kilometer for plastic fiber, uh, a good standard for that or a good, uh, a good rule on that is you're, you're losing 3 dB per meter. So every six feet or so, you're losing half your light. So they have high attenuation, they have less resistance to high temperature. They are plastic. Uh, so the high temperatures found on aerial installations or in uh, automobile or some medical applications or uh, aeronautic applications, the higher temperatures reached in those areas, plastic fibers wouldn't be able to stand up to them. This is a table on page, I believe it's on page 66 in your books, uh, showing the different fiber types, their core and cladding diameters, and their attenuation coefficient based on the wavelength being used for them. We use mode conditioners. We want to reach or we want to achieve equilibrium. Uh, uh, mode conditioners are used to equalize the power in all of the launch modes at a multi -mode, in a multi-mode fiber to perform correct power measures. These are our higher modes here. These are the ones traveling a longer distance. Higher order modes are more attenuated than lower order modes. Equilibrium modal dis distribution, or EMD, is where the power distribution no longer depends on the distance from the source, meaning that we have the same power through all of our modes, through our higher, lower, and fundamental modes. So we use mode filters to achieve this. They're used to selectively reduce higher order modes to simulate equilibrium modal dis uh, distribution conditions. One type of mode filter is a mandrel wrap. So this is introducing macro bends to force those higher order modes out. Uh, mandrel wrap to remove higher order modes. Controlled macro bending is performed around that mandrel of a specific size. In this chapter, we listed the characteristics of fiber optic transmission, explain the concepts of light refraction and reflection, and define the refractive index, discuss the light, prop discuss light propagation in an optical fiber and total internal reflection. We compared and contrasted single mode and multi-mode optical fibers, discussed the characteristics of step index, graded index, and dispersion shifted fibers. We explained the factors affecting the quality of light transmission such as attenuation, modal dispersion, and chromatic dispersion, and we explain the use of mode conditioners.